Well, hello, welcome again Reading to our reading of Theocritus, Idle 11, and we're going to resume back at uh, verse 19. So, lot or lines 19 to 24, Polyphemus calls on Galatea and asks the obvious question, why don't you like me? He then praises her looks and manner. He's still lovesick and incoherent in his thoughts at this stage, and he sees her only in his dreams, and when they pass, so Galatea vanishes. I mentioned that the name Galatea um, means milky one, and here, of course, she's described as nuka, as white. We have this fascinating painting from, um, from antiquity, um, and you can see in the picture there's Polyphemus, and here, of course, is the milky Galatea. Not quite clear, and you've got the pastoral setting here of the animals. Not quite clear who this person up here is. Um, but it's a lovely uh, wall painting from, I think, Pompeii. So, um, in this next section that we read, from 19 to 24... O Luca Galatia, Titon Filiont Apobale, Luca Terra Pactas Pot Idain, Hapalotera Anos, Mosco Garotera, Fierotera Omphacos Omas. And this is a question. So, O White Galatea, why? Apple ballet, well, um, do you um, re reject, throw away, repulse the one loving you? And then in opposition to Galatea, you who are whiter than, and we get Paktas, Pakto is cream cheese, whiter than cream cheese, pot idane for pros idane, epexegetic infinitive here to look at. Uh, and, uh, well, softer uh, than... Um, now, anos is a genitive here. The, the nominative of this word does not occur. We only have it in oblique cases, and this is the genitive. Uh, so it's softer than a lamb, but um, garotera... Now, garos means playful, or can also mean proud or standoffish. Uh, some might translate it as more skittish than a Moscow. This is a genitive here, uh, um, after the comparative, than um, a calf. And fierotera, another fairly rare word. Fieros means bright or shining or sleek, perhaps. So more um, shining, and again, two genitives here. Um, an omfax is an unripe grape, and the adjective almos here is, uh, one meaning of it is unripe. So, um, more shining than an unripe grape. Uh, foites, you come, you frequent. Uh, the out here probably has the sense of here, so you frequently come... Um, to me understood hutos in this way hoka for hote when uh, sleep sweet sleep eke me takes me takes hold of me so you only in other words he's only seeing her in his dreams oike and you go immediately iusa going hoka when sweet sleep Aname um, releases me. Fuges dospe ois polion lucon atresasa. So it's um, do you, f it's a question again. So do you flee like a sheep when it sees, having seen, participle here, uh, a grey lucon, a grey wolf? Now that's up to verse um, 
24. The next section of this, which is lines 25 to 33, in this section, Polyphemus moves to a new stage in the internal dialogue. He attempts to retrace the steps which led him to the present predicament. He's fallen in love with her when they first met. Um, and since that day, he's had no rest from lovesickness. He's aware of her lack of reciprocation and he looks for reasons. The obvious one is, of course, as he admits himself, that he's so grotesque with one eye surmounted by a very shaggy eyebrow and his broad nose. So continuing then, Erasthain men egerge teus kora hanika praton entes ema sun matri delois hua kintina fula and then at the top of the next page we need the verb or the infinitive ex orios drepsasthai ego de hodin hodon um, agemonuon so he says um, I uh, fell in love with you this is uh, teus for for you here and ego so I in fact fell in love with you O maiden Hanukkah for Hanukkah when Praton for Proton when first you came um, along with my mother wishing and on the next uh, line we have Drepsasthai to pluck hyacinth um, fula leaves or flowers perhaps uh, ek Orios from the mountain, uh, but I was leading the way. Paus uh, thy de esi dawn, tu kai husteron ud eti pai nun et teno dunamai, tin de u mele u ma di uden. And having seen you, having beheld you, uh, even Husteron, even afterwards, and nor still perhaps even now. So from that time and from then on, um, uh, the Ude, nor Dunamai am I able to cease Ek Tenu from this. The Ectanu might be uh, from that time, or it may refer to this lovesickness. Um, probably the um, the lat the the former, I think, from that time. So, having seen you from that time afterwards, and even still now, I am not able to cease. That is to cease loving you, but. It is not a concern tin for soy for you. So you don't care. Uma di Uden no by Zeus you care Uden nothing. You couldn't don't care at all. Ginosko carries a cora tinis hunica fugues hunica moi lassia min ofros epipanti metopo. Ex otus tetatai proti doteron hors mia macra haste of thalmos huvesti platea deris epicale. I know, beautiful maiden, uh, on account of what thing, so why, hunica for henica on account of what thing you are fleeing. So I know why you are fleeing. Hunica, again, this here is for Hottie now, I think, um, because um, now we get off uh, Lassia Ophrus, and that goes, I think, with the Mia Macra. Since there is one great shaggy eyebrow, and it gets split, interestingly, across the two lines, um, on my uh, 
entire forehead. Tetatai, from Taino, it is stretched out uh, from ear, potithoteron, uh, os. Now this is top heteron here. So it is stretched out from one ear to the other ear. And the one eye is underneath and the platea ris um, a broad or uh, perhaps uh, almost flat here broad nose or a flat nose uh, um, understand lies epicale above my lip so he's describing himself here in pretty grotesque form and that's the end of that section up to line 33.